In today's video, we're going to be going over refraction and Snell's law. To do that, we're going to use one of the excellent simulations from PHT Interactive Simulations. They have a bunch of really good simulations for math and science. Check out their website. The link is in the description below. And before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please support our channel, Step by Step Science. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. Leave us a nice positive comment. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share this video. In addition to that, we've made a bunch of our teaching learning materials which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And let's get started. Refraction and Snell's Law. We're going to go over a brief review of refraction. Then we'll talk about Snell's Law using the simulation in kind of a qualitative way. And then we'll go over some quantitative problems. But we'll use the Snell's Law equation to calculate the indices of refraction and the two angles. Okay, but what is refraction? Refraction is simply the bending of light when ends of material are traveling at a different speed. You can see here we have air, and here we have water. Light is going to be traveling slower through the water because it's more dense, optically dense. So when that light ray crosses that boundary, it's going to be bent because it travels at a different speed. In this case, it bends towards the normal line. This is the normal line. Water has a different index of refraction than air. For air, it's about 1. For water, it's about 1.33. And therefore, it's going to bend towards the normal line when it crosses that boundary. If you're not familiar with what the index of refraction is, then I, of course, made a video for that in the link you can get in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But refraction is simply the bending of light when it enters a material where it will travel at a different speed. And you can see it's bent right there towards the normal line. Now, these are the terms that you should be familiar with for refraction in Snell's Law. We have the incident ray. That's the ray coming in. It doesn't matter whether it comes in from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. The incoming ray, the ray that's going towards that boundary between those two materials, is the incident ray. And it makes, with the normal line, the angle of, re of incidence. The angle is always measured between the normal line and the ray, not between the ray and the boundary. The normal line is simply an imaginary line that's drawn perpendicular at a right angle to the boundary where the incident ray strikes that boundary. Okay, it's just an imaginary line. It's kind of a reference line for measuring the angle. When that ray, the incident ray, crosses that boundary, then it becomes the refracted ray. And it makes, with the normal line, the angle of refraction, which I have designated those angles theta 1 and theta 2. Sometimes you see alpha and beta. I use the Greek letter theta 1 and theta 2. N are the N's are the indices of refraction, N1 and N2 of those materials. Okay, now let's go to the simulation. And you can see this is the simulation window. If you go to the home page for the simulation, it looks like this. There's the intro window, which is we used in the last video. There's the more tools video because it has more tools in the video uh, window. And then there's the prisms window, which is what, what we're going to use. This is the laser, which you can turn on and turn off. This is the environment on the desktop here. You can change the index of refraction from air to water to glass, mission material, or custom, or you can just do that with the slider. We're going to leave that set at air. Index of refraction, N. You can change from one, uh, one beam to five beams to change it from kind of positive to negative. We're just going to use it like this with one beam. You can change the wavelength of light. We're not going to bother with that in this video. And down here, we have these objects, these prisms. They can be set at different materials also. And we have all of those, and we can turn on the normal line, and uh, let's just bring one of them out here like this. And I'm going to turn this up here like this, and drag this over here like this, and you can see that light ray goes like that through that. We can turn the reflections on, which we don't really need. It makes it kind of a little bit more complicated. We can turn the normal line on, and we have a protractor to measure the angles, which we're not going to do in this part of the video, but we want the normal lines on. Okay, the thing you should notice here. The environment has an index of refraction of air, which is 1. The prism has an index of refraction, which is glass, which is about 1.5. This has a higher index of refraction than the environment. That means that when that light ray crosses that boundary, it's going to be traveling more slowly through glass because, as we said, it's going to be traveling at, diff at a different speed. And therefore, it's going to bend towards the normal end because this has a higher index of refraction. 
when the light travels from a material with a lower index of refraction into a in material with a higher index of refraction, it bends towards the normal line, and the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. On the other side, now when we talk about this side, when it's going to be leaving the prism, we can kind of ignore it. It doesn't really matter what happened over here. But now, though, this is the incident ray now. This is the angle of incidence. It's crossing over into a material with a lower index of refraction, air. And therefore, it bends away from the normal line. When the light crosses that boundary into a material with a higher index of refraction, the glass, it bends towards the normal line. Angle of incidence is less than the, excuse me, angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. When the light ray comes to the other side, it's now going to be leaving the glass and traveling into a material with a lower index of refraction. And therefore, it bends away from the normal line, and the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Now, you might notice that these two sides of this prism are equal, excuse me, are parallel. That means that this ray, when it enters, should be parallel to this ray when it exits. That also means that this angle and this angle are equal, like opposite exterior angles in math, and this angle and this angle are equal, which means that um, those are like opposite interior angles. Now, all that is true because um, we have, in this case, with the angles, is we have a square prism. If we use a triangular prism, the same principles apply for the refraction. When that light ray crosses that boundary from air into glass, it bends towards the normal line, and the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. On the other side, it leaves that glass, which has a higher index of refraction, into the air, which has a lower index of refraction, and it bends away from the normal line. In this case, the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Okay? But you'll notice the rays aren't parallel anymore because this side is not parallel to this side. Another thing I want to point out is, in this case, the, uh, the normal line is not drawn vertically like it was for the square prism. But it is always drawn so that the normal line makes a 90-degree angle with the side of the prism. That's the way you draw it. You don't always draw it horizontal or vertical. Okay, some people, when they do this one first, they think, oh, the, line, the normal line is always drawn vertical. No, the normal line is always drawn perpendicular to the side of the prism where the light ray strikes that prism. Okay, now, the other one that's a little different just for drawing is the circle. But once again, we have a material with a higher index of refraction from a material with a lower index of refraction, and it bends towards the normal line. The normal line in this case is perpendicular to the side, and the way you draw it, it goes towards the center. It's like the spokes on a bicycle wheel. Once again, here, when it leaves, it bends away, and this has a greater angle. The angle of, ref of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Okay? There you go. In all three cases, the physics is the same. The way you draw it is a little different because the shapes are different. All right. Now let's go back to our presentation and just go over that really quick. Here is the square. Strikes that boundary, bends towards the normal line, strikes that boundary, bends away from the normal line. On this side, this is the angle of refraction. It's less than the angle of incidence. On this side, this is the angle of refraction. It's more than the angle, greater than the angle of incidence. Okay, for the triangle, make sure you draw the normal line perpendicular to the side, not vertically. But the same thing, enter, bend towards the normal line, leaves bends away from the normal line. Circle, same thing. Bends towards the normal line, bends away, refracted away from the normal line. Okay, now we want to go back to our presentation, and we're going to look at this window right here. And what we want to do in this, this, this part of the video is we want to determine what is the index of refraction of this material, because we can set this to water, which it doesn't really matter what we have it, but I'm going to set this one to mystery A mystery material A, and they're not going to give us the index of refraction. We've got to figure it out. But we can do that using Snell's law if we turn the normal line on and we turn our protractor on, and we need to be able to measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. So you've got to know how to use a protractor. 
You turn it like this so that this side of the protractor, this edge of the protractor, is parallel to the shape. And that little uh, dash is right there where the ray strikes that surface. So you got to get that just like that. And you got to get that just like that. And I think I could swing this down just like that. Okay. So there you go. And you can see now we can measure the angle. You got to know how to use a protract. I'd say this angle, which is the angle of incidence, is about 38, 37, 38 degrees. This angle is about 15 degrees. This is the angle of refraction. We don't need to use this side. We just use one side or the other. We'll get the same answer. Okay, so now we know that this is water. We know what its index of refraction is because we can look that up. But we know the two angles, but we don't know the index of refraction of the mystery material, which is this shape right here. Okay, now we go back to our presentation, and this is the situation we had. This is Snell's law. Snell's law says that the index of refraction for the first material times the angle of incidence, one is for the incoming side, equals the index of refraction for the mystery material and times the, ang the sine of the angle of refraction. Okay, so for N1, we know that that was water. We can look that up. The index of refraction is 1.33. We want to know what is N2, the mystery material. We don't know that. That's the index of refraction of this material. But we can use Snell's law. We're going to solve that equation for N2. And that tells us that N2 is going to be equal to N1 times the sine of theta 1 divided by the sine of theta 2. Now, the 1s are always the incoming side. So that is 1.33 because that's the water where it's coming from, it's going into. And, and then uh, the angle, now I read this angle is about 38 degrees, divided by the sine of 15, which is the angle of refraction. And you get that the index of refraction for Mr. Material A is about 2.41. Okay? That is how you can do that using Snell's law to figure out that index of refraction. Now, we can also do that, use Snell's law to figure out the angles. So we have a problem here that says a ray of light uh, is traveling through air. It's approaching a boundary with water at an angle of 57 degrees. We want to know what is the angle of refraction. So I like to just draw a little diagram not necessarily to scale, but this is the situation we have the light ray coming in, it's traveling through air, the index of refraction air is 1. The angle of incidence is 57 degrees. It says approaching the boundary with 57 degrees. It tells us on the other side is water, it has an index of refraction of 1.33, and we want to know what is going to be the angle of refraction, which is this one right here, and I drew it because it bends towards the normal line, because that tells us that the theta 2 is going to be less than theta 1. We want to know what is this uh, theta 2, the angle of refraction. It better be less than 57 degrees. Snell's law. We want to so solve this equation for the sine of, for theta 2, but we're going to start by solving it for the sine of theta 2. The sine of theta 2 is n1 times the sine of theta 1 divided by n2. The sine of theta 2 is therefore going to be equal to 1, because that's the index of refraction, times 57. See, the two things that are on the same side go together divided by 1.33. Now, when we solve this part, this side, that will be the sine of the angle. But we want to know what the angle is, so you've got to use your arc sine, your inverse sine key on your calculator, and you get that theta 2, the angle of refraction, is just about 39 degrees. So there you go. That's two problems we did there. Two example problems. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. We went over a review of refraction. We went over Snell's Law and kind of a qualitative, and then we did a couple quantitative problems using the equation for calculating the index, the index of refraction and the angle. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please don't forget to do all of the following five things. Subscribe, click the notifications bell, leave a nice positive comment, share this video, and give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.